It's 1947 and Eddie Valiant is a private detective in Hollywood. With money problems and no other prospects, Eddie reluctantly takes up a case involving the thing he hates most in life, tunes. When a murder occurs involving the case, Eddie is forced to partner with the suspect and the unlikely pair travel Hollywood and Toontown to find the answer to the question everyone is asking. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Welcome to Movie Friends. My name is Seth. And I'm Michelle. Today we're talking about Who Framed Roger Rabbit from 1988. Directed by Robert Zemeckis. Written by Jeffrey Price and Peter S. Seaman. Cinematography by Dean Cundy. Composed by Alan Silvestri. Edited by Arthur Schmidt. Starring Bob Hoskins, Christopher Lloyd, Kathleen Turner, Joanna Cassidy, and as the voice of Roger Rabbit, Charles Fleischer. Michelle, how are you? What's going on, Seth? Happy almost spring. We're both just very happy sun is here. We can feel yes, it. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it feels good. I'm bathed in natural light right now. I know, you're fully illuminated. Like, yeah. I think the days of Seth going dark will come back in the fall because I'm like, <laughs> it's not over. It's not, no. Nope, no, it's just coming back. Yeah. This is a this is a big week here. We got Daylight Savings time. We have the yeah. Oscars. Right, yeah. Got Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I know that's I mean that's what's big in my life (laughs) you've been deep into the rabbit hole deep uh, yes this was your pick this week it was it was yeah I hope I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoy this movie Ooh, and you know it's interesting that you say that because we're gonna try out a new little thing on the show don't worry it won't make the episode too much longer unless I take forever to explain it we're gonna start writing down our predictions for the other person's rating at the top of the show. Yep. Predictions. Delilah, don't sue us. Okay. So for Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Michelle, I'm going to write it down here on a piece of paper. Okay. I'm writing it down. Here's my pen. Yep. Here's my pencil. Done. Done. All right. This will now sit over to the side, and we will see if we're right later on. We're not going to touch it. You can't no. cheat. No, no, no. Nope. The pencil's gone. Yep. Threw it away. Boing! Neither of us made the sound that would be made if you threw away a writing. If you, yeah. Hey, listen. Our brain is in Toontown, I think. That's right. Oh, yeah, definitely. I was so far into Toontown that I was on the wrong microphone. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks, but um, Michelle picked it up, and we're, we're good to go now, so I might sound different. Sound crystal clear. Okay. Well, anyway, here we go. Anyway. Okay. What was he saying? Oh, that's right. Emails. Yeah. Speaking of tunes, first email says, hi, Seth and Michelle. First, saying movie guy, movie buff, and cinephile feels like the equivalent of saying schmovie movie film. So allow me to put on my cinephile hat for a moment to share a fact about Rear Window. Okay. I'm ready for it. Hat is on. I know you had a huge issue with the kissing scene. But this is actually a moment of brilliance from Hitchcock. This film was made during the Hayes Code, when no on-screen kiss could be more than three seconds. Hitchcock figured out a loophole by having the actors stop kissing and then talk at intervals to get it past the censors. He wasn't breaking any rules, so his characters could go right on kissing. This is a top-tier Hitchcock movie, so thanks for covering it. And I support you watching Psycho in December. Your movie friend, Betsy. Betsy. Wow. Hey, Betsy. Thank you so much for sending that little bit of knowledge our way. Seth is dropping his pencil, the one we talked about that's supposed to be thrown away. (laughs) Sorry. That wasn't a pencil, but yeah, I did drop something. Anyway, thanks, Betsy. Thank you. That totally makes sense. A lot of creative stuff was done because of the Hayes Code, and some stuff in Roger Rabbit that we'll mention was also done because of limitations and contracts and so on mm-hmm. and so forth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, sometimes limitations can make you be creative, but we don't like the Hayes Code because that was censorship. So right, 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 right. Get out of here. Next email says, Jimmy Stewart is great in this, 
and it isn't even in his top three performances, which is pretty interesting. Do they provide his top three performances? No, no. I know one of your favorite films, Harvey. Yes. That's a Jimmy Stewart yeah. classic. It is. Referenced yeah. also in this film. I know. Well, referencing the play, right? Because the movie came out bef- after 1947. True. Very true. Or the book. Whoa. The written. Whoa. Michelle just got me. Well, because I caught that and and I looked at each other and I was like, wait a minute. Right. Hold up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. De Palma does voyeurism better than Hitchcock. Come at me, bro. Seth is the anti-Quentin Tarantino. Breakfast cats update should be a thing. Yeah. My breakfast club. My cats. P.S. LB equals light bulb and then light bulb emoji. Mm-hmm. P.S.S. Cinnamaroni is the thirst queen. And P.S.S.S. Yeah, okay. Amazing how good this is and it isn't in my top five of his films. There's a lot of lists in this email. There are. There are. Like it's not Stewart's top, but it's also Ben's. I figured it's Ben, right? This yes. Has to be yes. Ben. This is Ben. Okay. Bullet point Ben. Um and it's not lists, whatever lists he just, his personal. Yeah, but you know, I don't know. I don't know that people wouldn't put Rear Window in Hitchcock's top five. Right. I, I mean, I don't know enough. The Birds, right, is up there. Psycho. Vertigo. Vertigo, definitely North by Northwest. People are real big fans of Psycho, of course, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, I, I always say my favorite is Rope, and that's usually nowhere near people's right. top five. Right. And then Ben's list was, he was talking about Hitchcock, not Jimmy Stewart, right? Because there was two going on there. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, Ben. Thanks, Betsy. Thank you, Ben. If you guys want to be like always. them, you can send us an email, moviefriendspodcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear, you know, even if you don't have any cool facts about Hitchcock. Yeah, send us anything. If you have any cool, like, snail stuff, once a year, I get into like my snail craze. Yeah, so yeah. If you have any cool snail videos or snail facts, we are hitting Michelle's uh, snail time of the year. Yeah, <laughs> seems to happen once a year. So even though we're asking for an email, you can still send us a snail mail. Oh, <gasps> oh my gosh, a whole new level. Also, you know, we do have a birthday coming, Michelle. Yeah, I'm sure she'd I do. love to see an email. I would love to see an Apple Podcast review. You know how depressed it makes me going on there and the last one was from December? I, Guys. I know. I, I Just write, put a snail emoji and be like, happy birthday, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'll be real informative for the people who are coming on to learn about the show. Like, What, what gonna, do people say about this? Right, but they're going to rate it five stars. Okay, all right. So anything, people, anything. Like I said, it was Oscars week. How was it for you? Because least you know favorite me. part of the year. I, I feel like such a broken record talking about it all the time, but I just, I really don't. I know, love but them. you engage in it, so at least you're a part of the conversation. Yeah, I'm like I... on the periphery. I'm I'm like throwing throwing apples over the fence, you know. And I'm watching you throw the apples <laughs> over the fence. That's how I am with the Oscars. Yeah, it, yeah. Not always. I used to I used to have people over for the Oscars. I would make food and cocktails. Yeah. And it just. As I've gotten older, as we know, I've gotten further and further away from movies. So I I used to watch a red carpet. I don't even do that anymore. Wow. But like you're missing an opportunity for a costume party. I know. And I love a costume party, but I don't think anyone in my orbit would even care to attend something like this. No. Except for you. And you could just come and mock. And I wouldn't. Right. I wouldn't even enjoy it. I'd be sitting there throwing apples at the screen. Right. And, you know, I don't want that on my TV. So (laughs) anyway, Oppenheimer won. You know, best picture and yeah. So it was not the upset that I thought it was going to be. And did you like Ryan Gosling's performance? I did catch that. I I saw that. Um, I also watched Killian Murphy's acceptance speech. Okay. I watched part of Emma Stone's acceptance speech. I think my yes. video started buffering for a while, and I was like, yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, you'll get it tomorrow. Yeah. I did see Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito presenting oh, i don't know if you saw that i, didn't, I did it's not see really that funny. it's really funny well they were in twins together yes so they come out and they're like they're like we're presenting together for a very obvious reason so everyone's like yeah you were in twins and they're like 
It's because both of us got beat up by Batman. <laughs> so they talked about being Mr. Freeze and the Penguin. And then Michael Keaton was there. So they cut to him and they're like making fun of him. And it was funny. It was really funny. That's funny. Yeah. That works. Did you like the whole John Cena naked bit? I thought that that was funny once Jimmy Kimmel wasn't part of it. Right. Once Jimmy Kimmel's timing was, it was yeah, when Cena was just free to do his own thing, I thought it yeah. got way, way funnier. And then yeah. when, it, yeah, yeah, when he comes out and he's like, so costumes. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. But yeah, I like the Oscars. I like awards shows when they're ridiculous and over the top and silly and crazy and, you know. Yeah, I used to enjoy the SAG Awards because those were kind of more mm-hmm. loosey-goosey given by the actors themselves. Yeah, yeah. It's like hosted and celebrated actors for actors type deal. Speaking of celebrating actors, who framed Roger Rabbit? <laughs> I didn't I didn't I didn't have anything. I was really. like, where's he going with this? Yeah, I didn't really have anything going into that one. Anyway, our movie this week, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, third entry in our series on mystery, picked mm-hmm. by Michelle. Normally, if one of us hasn't seen the film before, we record our pre watch thoughts, but both of us have seen this and so we're just gonna skip it, get straight into it. May I ask why you picked this movie? Yeah, I love this movie so much. Obviously, I didn't watch it when it first came out because I would have been one years old. Yeah. But I have a very, very, very clear core memory of watching this with my dad in our living room, probably around five or six, and watching the idea that tunes exist in real life and we coexist and share the same world like blew my mind. And I was just obsessed with this idea. Uh, Watching it as an adult, it's insane how much I actually did remember. Yeah. But obviously, you know, you don't get a lot of the jokes when you're younger. You're just more fixated on the cartoon part of it. Right. But I love this movie so much, but I think maybe it's part of the nostalgia part. But also, it looks really good. It looks really damn good for 1988. And the amount of work that went into this, I mean, the budget was, I'm sure you'll get into that too. But yeah, what are, what's your relationship with this movie? I remember watching this. Uh, if you've listened to our episode on Planet of the Apes, you'll remember me talking mm-hmm. about my Aunt Oga. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This was an Aunt Oga's house movie. I remember so clearly sitting in her living room watching Roger Rabbit. I had never seen it before. I was born in 88, and so I also was not seeing it (laughs) growing up as a kid. And I don't really remember my feelings on it then, apart from being absolutely terrified of Christopher Lloyd. Judge Doom. Judge Doom. Yeah, that part didn't stick with me as a kid, which is really That's weird. What's wild. Yeah. Yeah. What was to me, it was the fact that tunes can coexist in the real world. That was what I was so fixated on, how creative that was. Yeah. And of course, you know, Jessica Rabbit's dress. Sure. Look sure. It, how, how does it glitter like that? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, my whole life when I've thought about like Roger Rabbit and I, I, I had seen it in its entirety past my aunt Olga's house that one mm-hmm. time. But mm-hmm. um, whenever I think about Roger Rabbit, I think about the shoe and the dip and then Judge Doom's face transforming and his eyes and his voice going crazy. Wow. Like at the end, I very rarely thought about Roger even, himself. Even baby Herman. I mean, no, not really. that whole opening sequence to me is like, I remembered like every single scene that was coming. I was like, wow, I can't believe it. And I was like, I can't wait for him to come out. And his voice with his old cigar. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> his pink bow. Yeah. Watch it, toots. Yeah. No, no. It was, just, it was pretty much just Judge Doom, like burned into my brain. But I will say, I was talking with our good friend and patron, Sean, mm-hmm. about this movie. Mm-hmm. I was surprised at like, how much I remembered of it. Yeah. Um, like yeah. as the movie's unfolding, I'm not like, I don't remember any of this, you know. 
It was yeah. a mystery to yeah. me. I was like, oh, that's right. Now, the actual mystery part of it, I feel like I just fully grasped like my second time watching. <laughs> okay. I'm so glad you said that because I feel I watched it. This isn't a hard movie to watch, but when it no. ended, I'm like, did I understand the conflict here? Yeah. Did I truly like, you know, uh, ingest that correctly? Yeah. And, <laughs> like, and so I had to read about it a little bit to make sure I have like every step of the events in the right order. Yeah. Someone wants to build a freeway. And in order to do so, he needs to demolish two movie studios. That's right. Yeah. So the one guy sells to him. The other guy won't. So the guy who sells goes to blackmail the other guy. And then the guy ends up dead. And things get out of hand. Yeah. And Jessica was in on the photos being taken from the beginning. Right. Which is a detail that I kept missing I think because okay. it's revealed in the scene where his pants are off. <laughs> and like, I'm not paying attention to like any exposition in that scene because I'm watching like shirtless Bob Hoskins <laughs> and the mirror shot, the mirror shot where Jessica's holding the mirror. How cool is that? And then the mirror turns perfectly to see, you know, the camera's coming over Hoskins shoulder and then it captures yeah. his face in a mirror that's turning towards him that's yeah. held by a cartoon. So right. some of those details, I will say, I, I, I did not grasp. <laughs> no. And and I also, I don't think I grasped when I was a kid that we had Disney characters in there. We had Warner Brother characters in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the use of every tune, I don't, I don't think I really... You know, no, I didn't understand idea. that that was like a big deal or that that was anything yeah. special because I was like, yeah, it's cartoons. Yeah. Right. Everybody makes cartoons. You know, there's just cartoons right. in this one. Right. When you're a kid, you're just like, okay, I watch Looney Tunes. I watched it. It's all the same. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's an odd plot for a zany movie, right? To be like. <laughs> well, did you <laughs> the look freeway. up any. <laughs> well, right. Did you look up any any background? And we won't get into it because it's like. It's so zany. But like the book of who censored Roger Rabbit? Only a little bit, not a ton. I mean, that was super, super dark. And then when it was adapted, it was adapted so many times into the screenplay. Yeah. And just the different versions they did. I was like, we are getting way out of hand. I mean, what they ended up with, I guess, works someone wanting a freeway, which is comical. In right, right. But this like really happened like in right. real life right. throughout the zany events of Roger Rabbit. There's all these like small details, but also not small, like also like just really in your face. But you don't really know how they line up about mm -hmm. this company called Cloverleaf. And Cloverleaf mm -hmm. is based on a real company called National City Lines. And that was like a company that was made up by other companies who basically like phased out streetcars and like public transportation so that people would buy their own cars and like build highways and freeways and which is really sinister like that yeah. someone was like hey we're car makers but people just take this electric thing that costs a nickel every day let's buy that company dismantle it and then everyone will have to buy a car it will be awesome right and i i definitely didn't understand as a kid, but no. made me laugh really, really hard is when Judge Doom towards the end is like <laughs> talking about how there will be no traffic in L.A. I know. <laughs> I know. I mean, I feel like they added that for comic relief. Like that is the most ridiculous statement ever. Right. And it's all these like Hollywood people making this movie. And so they're like, yeah. what's the most evil person <laughs> that we can make exist? Oh, it's the dude who like screwed up public transportation for LA. Yeah. It's funny. That part I did not remember anything of when I no. was No. And that made sense to me. Like I wouldn't grasp that yeah. as a young kid. Yeah. You know, you know there's the bad guy who's trying to get rid of Toontown. Right. That's well, essentially all you think. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And like that's my first kind of point or like my big like revelation after watching this movie and reading about it and how they did what they did 
and why and the budgets and like the cooperation between studios and all of that stuff. Like I've been thinking about all this. My here's here's my thought. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. I think the more you learn about movie making mm -hmm. can only make you like Roger Rabbit more. Mm -hmm. But if you know nothing about how movies are made, this can and will still completely blow your mind. Oh, absolutely. True statement. True statements. Yeah, and I think there are movies that are made nowadays primarily by like Christopher Nolan <laughs> or maybe like Denis Villeneuve who just did Dune and he made Arrival that are pretty heady films, you know, like Tenet. Nolan was really adamant like, hey, don't try to understand what's happening. Just go in and feel it. Just go in and experience it. But as you're watching it, you're trying to figure it out. <laughs> sure. You know, right. like it's confusing and you're like, wait, what? Who? Ha ha. It's really hard to just sit back and like turn your brain off. And so I think that there are modern filmmakers who want to do what Roger Rabbit does, but they they miss what Roger Rabbit has, which is exactly what you just said. You you know that Judge Doom wants to get rid of Toontown. That's all you need to know. All the cloverleaf and the freeway. And as a kid, you don't care. He wants to get rid of Toontown. He must be right, bad. Yes. Right, exactly. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. That's all and you need to know. there's a rabbit. There's a rabbit whose main goal in life and thing that makes him the happiest is making people laugh. Correct. Correct. And he that's thinks it. that that is like not just his purpose, but that's the secret to yes. life. Yes, yes. I love that scene when he's supposed to be hiding out and they find him entertaining a group of somewhat rough people that we've already met in the movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he explains to Eddie, these people won't turn on me because I've made them laugh, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's standing on a soapbox <laughs> while he's giving his speech, which is also really funny. And It's great. And then, yeah, they don't turn on him. Yeah. I mean, I, that's a good message. It is a good message. I think it's probably a message that informed a whole lot of class clowns growing up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I think that you and I operate somewhat similarly in social situations where it's like, if I can get people on my side or laughing, even by making fun of myself a little bit, you don't need to be the coolest person in the room to get everyone on your side. You actually need to be like the funniest or the silliest. Right. Right. I mean, I th and we've also talked about this like, well, I won't speak for you, but the highest compliment is to hear you're funny. Yeah. I rather hear I'm funny over any other compliment that you could give me. I mean, along with like, and I'm not saying I don't, you know, there's other, like caring and loyal. Right. That's what I know. was thinking. I was like, maybe like friendly, kind, <laughs> kind, good heart. But like, to me, that's a given. Yeah, those are, I think that those are character things, not personality things. Right. Like, yeah. that's my core of who I am. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. if you say I'm funny, like that, thank you. Or if something I did is funny, yeah. Right, because I believe that I'm funny. And so if someone know, walks same. up to me and they're like, you're really handsome, I'd be like, Ugh, get away from oh. me. <laughs> well, that's such a good point. <laughs> like, like, if someone were to compliment my looks in a positive way, I'd be like, no. But if you say I'm funny, it's like, oh, thank you. Because, right. like, I know I'm funny. Right. I get I get that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, like, don't tell me if I'm cute or something. Thank you Not for that happens often. repeating back to me what I know in my mind. Right. Validation. And that's what Jessica says about him towards the end. Eddie's like, what do you see in that guy? And she's like, he makes yeah. me laugh. I mean, like, yes. So I want to talk about Eddie, Bob Hoskins. Yeah. Who's British? Who knew? He's he is very British. Yeah. Very, very British. I didn't British. know. I had no idea. I think a lot of people growing up in the 90s will recognize Bob Hoskins from the Super Mario Brothers movie where he plays Mario. Maybe. Okay. That might be a check back in on this show later on. Yeah. <laughs> if we ever yeah. do a video game series. Ooh, just, that would be interesting. Just a Bob Hoskins series. I don't know. Bob month. <laughs> Bobbin for Hoskins month. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 
whatever. We'll also, as it. me from Hook, Spielberg's Hook. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. 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 Hoskins is like you know serious dramatic actor, clearly well adept uh, in the realm of comedy, but he had starred in a few crime noir thrillers. Probably the most famous would be The Long Good Friday and uh, Mona Lisa. I haven't seen The Long Good Friday. It's been on my list forever. Mona Lisa is awesome, like really, really great. But as a kid, I didn't know him as that. I just knew him as the guy from Roger Rabbit and and Smee and Mario. So I thought he was like a silly, goofy guy. Yeah. And then I grew up and I'm like, oh, this is. (laughs) He's a serious guy. Yeah, like this is totally. Uh, totally different for you. How'd you feel about him as Eddie Valiant? I thought he did a great job. He brings such a, like at first you're trying to figure him out. Like, why is he so nasty and Mm -hmm. what happened to him? And why is he so sad? And he's an alcoholic. And also like, how did you get this job as a detective? Because it seems like you have no money, but yet this studio hired you. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem like you're very good at your job. And then we come to learn that him and his brother did this. His brother was killed by a tune. We start to build on him. But I appreciated him even more after I was watching two documentaries about making the making of Roger Rabbit and Mm. behind the scenes. He said that he was so proud of doing this movie and mostly because his kids were were able to watch it. Right. Because up until this point, he wasn't able to bring his kids to any of the stuff that he was in. Right. And so his kids loved this, and that made him really proud. Right. And I thought, like, if you watch any of the behind the scenes of how this movie is made, he does an amazing job with keeping the eye level. Yeah. They all do in this movie. Because, yeah. like, the, they do rehearsals, and then they add in, like, a prop, and then they have to line it up and then draw in the – which all of the characters are hand-drawn, which is insane to me. Yeah. There's no computers. Yeah. Like, what the heck? No CGI. Like – Anyway, that's and so he just did an amazing job miming. Like it's so believable. Yeah. It's so believable. He acts in a way as our representative in the movie because no one else is ever surprised by tunes being around. He's the only one who's like jumping and moving and irritated and rolling his eyes. Everybody else is just like, Yeah, there's tunes around. (laughs) When he's scared by Mm -hmm. Dumbo, it's so funny. Because it's Dumbo, who's like the least scariest cartoon, you know, ever made. Also, Dumbo is the first character who shows up in the film who is like a licensed character from another studio. Up until that point, you're just watching a bunch of, you know, made up characters. Yeah. And it's still cool and it's still very interesting. But then Dumbo shows up and you're like, oh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. This Mm -hmm. is something, something different. I love Hoskins. I love that they let him actually drink and not just talk about being an alcoholic. I love that he's like gruff and mean. And then in the end, he starts killing weasels by singing and dancing. (laughs) It's great. It's yeah, it's so good. (laughs) I mean, I loved it. I thought that was a choice. If I'm reading this script, I'm getting to that point and I'm being like, oh, maybe is there something else I can do? I don't know about doing a whole song and dance thing. To think about all the people that were thought of for this role, Bill Murray, Eddie Murphy. Yeah. It uh, doesn't. Harrison Ford. It doesn't work the same with the comedic actors. I don't think. No. I don't think it works the same at all. Yep. Yep. I agree. I I've seen. Eddie Murphy be serious. I've seen Bill Murray be serious and they can do that. I don't know how they do serious funny. Right. Uh, opposite a cartoon rabbit. And it comes right. off the same as Hoskins doing it. Right. And he was just so good to, with like believing him as the, detec- the detective and taking his job seriously. Yeah. And very impressed. Very impressed. I loved how he wore his hat. I know that this is a very silly thing. But mm. his, his, his hat is just, uh, it's not the widest brim. And just how high off of his head it sits 
Mm -hmm. the whole i just couldn't take him seriously and i was like you look so so frumpy and so silly yeah i mean there were a couple of moments when going back to the scene when jessica shows up and we have that whole she's holding the mirror and we see his reflection i mean he comes out of the bathroom shirtless but wearing a tie (laughs) (laughs) i was very focused on that i was like and you know it's it's we're in 1947 and so the tie is short we're doing the short tie that's the style i was like I can't stop staring at your bare chest, sir. And Jessica's, you know, trying to explain her case. Mm-hmm. She says the great line, I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way. <sighs> what a, I mean, what a line. What a line. It's Iconic. funny, but it's also very deep. I mean, I want to go into it, but. I know. I didn't mean to go off the Bob train, but I had to mention. No, it. but I, I love the line. Yeah. I, I think it's I think it's the line of the movie. It is. It is. It's iconic. Yeah. It's iconic. Yeah. I have a question for you, and I don't have an answer. This isn't a setup, all right? (laughs) Oh, great. I love when you start things like this. What what is a tune? What is a tune to you? To me is a hand-drawn character. Okay. So, like, we're three-dimensional. Yeah. And we're human. Tunes are not human. They're made up. They're, they're, they're drawn. I don't know. But, but on that note, okay, because I did think this, like, how is a tune born? Right. Are, right. are they, does an artist draw them in this universe? Does an artist draw them and then they pop off the paper and then they live and they're live forever, and the only way to kill them is with the dip because they can do anything. Right. And even the head of the studio says that. It's like, ah, there's a tune. It could take it. I am so confused by what a tune is, and I know that probably someone is listening to this, rolling their eyes or pressing the, the stop button, being like, why can't this guy just shut up and like accept it? Like this. It's is not that I don't right. accept it. It's not that I don't accept it. I just don't know what it is. And it's the shoe dip scene for me. Well, okay. Yeah. On what's a Muppet? Mm, yes, yes. But we're not murdering Muppets. <laughs> but if we were to murder a Muppet. Yeah. How does one... How do you kill a Muppet? <laughs> Would you chop its head off? <laughs> and stuffing comes out? Like, what? How do you I murder a Muppet? I don't know, because I think Muppets have different properties per Muppet. For example, Swedish Chef has human hands. Actual hand, human hands. Yeah. Gonzo, you can stretch his arms and twist his nose. But like... He's tune-like. They are tune-like. I don't think that you could do the same thing to Kermit that you could do to like Rizzo the rat. Like, I feel like their pain tolerance is different. I don't, I I don't know. No, I agree. But you wouldn't do the same thing that Roger's doing to baby Herman. And I don't think baby Herman ever gets older. Like baby Herman is an old man in the baby body. Well, he has the other line of the movie, (laughs) which, (laughs) but go back to the dip scene. I'm sorry. We're getting off topic here. You that's what's holding you up. I know that I know that Judge Doom is evil and that he bought yeah. his way into being a judge. And I also know that he's an evil tune in disguise. So I'm not confused about how could a judge just murder someone? I know how. I get that part. He's bad. Mm-hmm. Bad news. Yeah. Got it. Bad news. Yeah. But like that shoe did that shoe have the same consciousness that Roger has? Because we well, see the way, shoes yeah. get kicked out of like a crate. I know all the shoes come out of like that. <laughs> They're like, dee, 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 dee. their first thought is like, let's just hop around really fast. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know, man. Like no one else around seems to be upset. Like none of the humans are upset. That Judge Doom is like just murdering this shoe in front of them. Well, Eddie's face, I mean, they're very disturbed. And I don't think it's a known thing. Like, oh, I'm it it was like this guideline. I mean, he did 
like the shoe got out of hand and they was like proving a point because he's in charge. But I don't think humans would approve of this. But the 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 one detective who's talking to Eddie, he he says he's like, oh, you know, Judge Doom figured out a way to kill the tunes and it's the dip. And so he's there for it. But like no one's like, stop, don't murder that shoe. Well, who's going to stand up to Doom? I guess so. I guess so. That's what it comes down to. No one's going to stand up to him. So it's like, okay, if tunes are just drawn and then they jump off the page and they're like, I'm alive now. And it's as simple as that. And that's how you make a tune. Then, okay, (laughs) fine. Draw up a hundred little shoes and kill them all. Who cares? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what gives them their little feelings. Right. You know? (laughs) That poor shoe. Where, do, wh- when did that shoe receive the spark of life? <laughs> right. And what about its counterpart? Right. And then does the hammer the have shoe? the same one? You know, like, I, yeah. yeah. Or it's almost like magical powers are given to inanimate objects that are drawn. So R- they are, they're like accessories, accoutrements. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I don't know. All I know is, that shoe scene is horrifying still. It's sad. Yeah. Yeah. It's disturbing. You see the whole thing. It's not like they cut away. No. Nope. Like they mm-hmm. show you that shoe like whimpering and screaming and. They're murdering. They are. Mur- yes. We are watching the murder of a shoe. Yes. And that's so that's like, OK, as we see that, it's like the mystery of this movie is gone almost. You think so? Oh, I mean, the mystery of the movie is who framed Roger Rabbit. Well, I, mean, I think it's the shoe the title, killer. But... <laughs> well, yes, but right like, how did bat. we get? How do we get there? Yeah, like is Jessica wrong? Is she lying? Because like, yeah. it takes a little while to figure out if she's good or bad. True, true, true. Even if she says, "No, I was in on it." Right. I only did patty cake because I wanted to save your role, Roger. You know. So that's my next question for you is tell me about Jessica Rabbit. I mean, I will never forget when we first meet her. Yeah. I think that whole sequence is like burned into my brain, not only because her dress is like extremely sparkly and glittery and I'm still like, it still looks so good. Yeah. But just entering the ink, I think it's the ink and paint Mm -hmm. club and seeing Donald and Daffy duel. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, it's yeah. so cool. And then when she started, when she, she walks out and performing, but I, I told you this off mic that it took until I was 37 years, 36 years old. I keep aging myself. I will be 37, right? I don't know. I was born in 87. Y'all could do the math. Yeah. It took until this rewatch to realize that she's not actually a rabbit. Yeah, I was confused how that was not clear to <laughs> I don't know why I grew. I, you know what? It, I think what it comes down to is we have Bugs and Babs mm-hmm. in the Looney Tunes universe. Lola and Bunny. So t- isn't it Babs? I think it, no, Lola is the uh, Space Jam. It is Lola. Yeah. But who is Babs Bunny? Is Babs? Oh, yeah. Babs is the pink bunny. She's a tiny tune. I'm sorry. She's oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Tiny tunes. Anyway, I don't know why I just... I think it goes back in my brain when I was a kid, like, like with like Donald and Daisy, Mm -hmm. Mickey and Minnie. So to me, I was like, Roger Rabbit, Jessica Rabbit. Yeah. And so watching as an adult, I'm like, oh, no, she's a human. She just took her husband's last name. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Not a human, but a cartoon form. A toon. She's a toon. Toon. That's not an animal. That's not an animal. I wish I knew what it was. And like, do we see? I'm trying to think. And maybe there's an obvious one, but like all of them are either animals or inanimate objects. Like, oh, we've got Benny the Cab. No, no, that are that are human like. Like Jessica is human like. Yeah. Who else in the Toon World? Oh, and Herman the baby. Herman the baby. Yeah. Um, Doom. And maybe J- Judge Doom. Yeah. yeah. Well, we never really seems- see like what who he Judge was. Doom right. Is yeah. Right. So again, it's more so they're animals. That are tunes. Anyway, what did you think of Jessica? <laughs> what are your feelings when I, you first meet her? It's crazy. I <laughs> know she's so voluptuous. Like and, it's, oh, it's insane. It's insane, and I think <laughs> Jessica is part of 
is this a kid's movie or is this not a kid's movie? And not entirely because of Jessica. For all the stuff I just said about Doom and yeah. treating alcohol very frankly, which it's like, okay, kids know what alcohol is. It's not like they need to be hidden from yeah. seeing someone drink alcohol. That's right. not what I'm saying at all. But it's like everything just kind of gets pushed to like the limit on yeah. all of those questions of... <laughs> Of content across the board. It's like, yeah, just keep pushing it. Uh, yeah, murder that shoe. And then uh, later um, have Christopher Lloyd be the scariest villain that anyone has ever seen. But Jessica is just, it's like over the top. I feel like this is a totally different conversation. And we've grown up, we grew up in the 90s. And so I know there's a lot of talks of what parents let their kids watch and what's appropriate now. Yeah. And who knows? I mean, maybe I am messed up from watching this movie, but like I never watched it. I was like, oh my God, the sex coming off of Jessica. I was just like, wow, look at her dress. And like, I wish I could live in a world with tunes because we also grew up with Looney Tunes and the violence, but I never yeah. wanted to like drop a bomb on someone. No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I know it's, oh, a, no. it's a different conversation. Oh, yeah. This that whole thing is, I think, silly. Um, I know. But that is a thing. That is a thing. That Right. I did take note this time. I was like, how interesting is it that like you have these cartoon characters, right? And we're going back to Looney Tunes, Tex Avery, that whole. Tex Avery, yeah. Mm -hmm. You have these cartoon characters who can do anything. And the majority of the time, what we choose to do with them is violence. Because it's funny. And, or so they're showing us that that is right. Funny. And it is funny. Those those cartoons are very funny. But I was just like, it's so funny that like, <laughs> so, yeah, so much I of, know. you know, the opening cartoon is it something's cooking, I think, mm-hmm. which I think looks great. It's so good. Uh, it's and a, to start with a cartoon. Yeah. You know, like before we get into. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, movies used to start. They'd show a cartoon before the movie. So there's a lot, lot going on there. I think the cartoon looks great. It's a great mix of 2D and then you get some 3D. The camera is moving like crazy throughout the whole opening cartoon. Looks great. It's funny. Yeah, I was like, we really like to see these cartoons get hurt and and in ways that would kill anyone else. And I've never really thought, I never thought about it because I just grew up watching them. I was like, yeah, that's right. funny. We, and no one in my orbit grew up with, wanting to reenact that i mean i never was like yeah let me try to hit my sister over the head with like a huge like sure mallet or something sure. you know or let me push her off a cliff or let's get a smoke bomb or something like right. it never in my world it's like oh those were oh looney tunes does that like right doesn't make it right or wrong i guess but yeah i can tell you time. as a kid seeing jessica rabbit it was extremely sexual and like sure yeah like yeah. oh my god like what 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 am I watching here? Yeah, I do like her though. To me, she's, she's great. She's great. I like that they take you know the the whole idea of the femme fatale, and uh, yeah. mm-hmm. she ends up being a good guy. And mm-hmm. the whole time I was like, but she was cheating on Roger. Yeah, I'm right. She but it then it's like part career. of the whole plot thing mm-hmm. too. So it's like, well, maybe she wasn't. I loved seeing their vacation photos yeah, and just like Roger in his swimsuit. Yes. It's just great to add that extra level in. <laughs> layer in rather not level. So we've been talking around him. How did you feel about Roger rabbit? He's zany. I mean, you know, after a while, if I was stuck with him, he'd probably drive me crazy. Yeah. Like insane. Um, and, but you know, he comes from a good place and he just wants to make people happy and he has a good heart. <laughs> He's Tigger. He can't right. help himself. Right. I, I was so frustrated with Roger. And yeah. I think they chose wisely in the amount that Roger is in this movie. Mm. Because every scene with him, he's like the only part of the scene. And so there's a lot of scenes without him. Every, every yeah, whenever he's around, it's just, he's a lot. <sighs> he's a lot yeah. for sure. And I feel like he lacks the same kind of personality of like Bugs Bunny or Daffy Duck. Like when I'm watching Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck, I'm not like, oof, this guy's a bit much. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. 
I did enjoy when they were in, when Roger and Eddie were in the theater and Eddie finally apologizes to him for pulling his ears. Right. And he's like, well, each time he right. apologizes. <laughs> and, then, and then Eddie like tells him the story about how his brother was killed by a tune. Right. And we see like the heart that comes through and how sad, like he can feel the emotion. Mm-hmm. So I, I like appreciated those scenes more than just like the, you know? yeah, yeah. When Roger and Eddie are handcuffed together mm-hmm. and Eddie goes to cut them off and Roger slips his wrist out to support the box. <laughs> Eddie says to him, you mean to tell me you could have done this the whole time? And Roger says, not the whole time, just when it was funny. Right. I related to that. (laughs) And I don't know if you can relate to that. Uh I related to that so much. Because I was like, oh, yeah. I can can do things and I can accomplish things. But it's like, Mm -hmm. you know, it's when you're on. yeah, and it's when the right moment hits. Right, it's when it matters. <laughs> it's like, I, 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 don't worry. When it matters, I can do That's it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, I, I think the most impressive part of Roger is just how he interacts with the environment and how he affects the environment around Eddie and all the real people. It's stunning when he jumps out the window and it leaves the silhouette of him. Even something as simple as, you know, his eyes go through the light socket, the power socket, and like knock over the beer bottle. Mm -hmm. I watched that like Mm -hmm. three times each time trying Mm -hmm. to figure out like exactly Mm -hmm. how they did it. Mm -hmm. And then I just gave up because I was like, I don't care. (laughs) It's just so cool. It's like magic movie making right there. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. A hundred percent. So, yeah, I just um, I don't. He's not my favorite. He's not my favorite. favorite. He's not my favorite. Yeah. I do want to get. I want to get your thoughts and opinions on Baby Herman. We've, I feel like on our show, we've talked about like kids smoking cigs and how funny we find this, but this is like a baby (laughs) who's like a man who loves a stogie. Yeah, yeah. I, I love Baby Herman. Um, I love the kids smoking when Eddie hops a line on the back of the (laughs) car and the kids like, thanks for the cigarettes or he thanks them for the cigarettes or whatever. I was like, oh, that's, really funny yeah yeah you could have had anyone be the sidekick in this like cartoon so to be like hey it's a baby but he's an old man who smokes cigars and also talks about his dinky and puts his hands up someone's skirt like yeah he's gross it's like those are all very (laughs) that's not something that you do day of right like (laughs) right (laughs) <laughs> they had to film. They had to make a special contraption that as the camera pans right, the woman's skirt gets blown up because baby Herman's walking through under her skirt. They had to plan mm-hmm. that and decide. Oh, it. yeah. And oh, yeah. It's, crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. So we kind of talked about it, but like, do you think that this is a kid's movie? And I don't mean I- this in a oh, it's 2024, these things are inappropriate for kids nowadays. Like, genuinely, yeah. were the filmmakers trying to make a movie for children, teenagers, adults, like, w- all of it? What do you think? I don't think this is a kid's movie. Uh-huh. I think this is for adults. It's like adult cartoons. Just because it's a cartoon doesn't mean it's made for kids. Yeah. It's just a different form of medium, right? right. So I, I personally don't think this is made for kids. However... I think it's one of those fun movies where your parents like, I love this and kid, you're going to watch it. Right. So here we go. <laughs> I mean, I watched a lot of stuff I probably shouldn't have watched at a young age. I think we all did. Yeah. That's like the best part of movies, right? I say that all the time. <laughs> like the best movie to watch when you're nine years old is a movie for an 11 year old or a 10 year old. Yeah. And you just yeah. keep doing that all through your childhood. And you like the stuff your, your age. You know, I grew up, I, I liked the snorks, you know. Uh-huh. I liked uh, Chili Willy. Oh, Chili Willy. You yeah. know. Right. Yeah, I grew up watching stuff made for my age range, but every once in a while you watch Who Framed Roger Rabbit and Ann Ogus House and it freaks you out. Right. I mean, do you think this is a kid's movie? You have kids. I do. 
Like, do you think it's more of a family movie? I don't think this is a movie just for kids. Yeah, no, I do think, I, th- I in a crazy way, I kind of think that this is a movie for everybody because kids just plain aren't going to get so many of the jokes, so much of the plot. They're yeah. making, they make a prostate joke. Yeah. A kid does not know what that is at all. I mean, we're perfect examples of what we took away from this movie watching right. it as a kid. Right. I remember the cool cartoons living with real life, you know, in a real life scenario. And so I, I don't think this is made exactly for kids, but it's more of like, you know, your parent will watch it with you. Yeah. What did you think of Baby Herman? I mean, I just like, so he's just such an odd. <laughs> it's, I mean, okay, the reveal. I think it's one of like the best parts of the movie because we start in the cartoon yeah, yeah, and then Roger screws up and then we pan out and we're like, oh, this is being shot. Yeah. Like, how is this even being animated and shot? Yeah. And then baby Herman walks off and he's just like, ah, oh, blah, blah. And he like grabs this, you know, you're trying to process everything. Yeah. You're like, whoa, we just broke. This baby who has a pink bow is like an old man voice. <laughs> Not that color should be associated with gender, but. Right. As a little kid, you're trying to like really absorb all the things you've yeah. been shown previously. He made me laugh, but extremely inappropriate. And being pushed in the carriage? Yeah, that's like, also... Who is that? Is that his owner, handler, I don't, agent? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, and it's a human? It's a human. Yes, it's not a... It's not a tune. It's not a tune. It's not a tune. So, yeah. that's odd. And then also, like, just that whole line where he's like, I got a 50-year-old lust and a three-year-old dinky. It's like I didn't need to know. Like I, I don't need to know about your like psychological well being and frustrations. Right. Well, like, <laughs> and like your just, body is not three years old. Like, uh, but oh yeah, it's like it's a whole weird can of worm it's thing so by a throwaway line where I'm like, you know what? <laughs> just yeah, please movie stop. <laughs> the the other weird thing out. is like he's consuming a real life cigar, right? So he they can consume stuff that exists in our universe, right? Because Roger can drink alcohol, right? So that's that's interesting. Yeah, and like yeah, like all the rules are very uh, like the rules. Roger's underwater when the weasels are like looking through the apartment, uh-huh. and you know he comes up like he has to breathe, and I'm like, but does he have to breathe? I, I'm sure he doesn't because if yeah, if he did, then that would be how you could kill a tune is by drowning them. Right. Like across the board, dip kills all. But right, because it erases. Each one is specific. Yeah, right. it erases them. Right, right. It's so crazy. <laughs> it's so crazy when you really think of it. <laughs> I don't love the Toontown stuff with Eddie. It goes on for a really long time, doesn't it? It's, well, in my opinion, it's the only part of the movie that I think doesn't look as good. I agree. I went on a cartoons in live action combination journey this week. Mm -hmm. I rewatched Chippendale Rescue Rangers from 2022. Okay. Which if you haven't seen, I actually recommend it. It's pretty funny. Wow. Very similar to Who Framed Roger Rabbit um, in that it's about cartoon characters who are actors. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a mystery. It's, but does it look does it look so clean? You know what I'm saying, like CGI clean. They do a funny bit where Dale has had CGI surgery, so <laughs> his character is CGI, and then Chip is still the 2D animation. That's funny. All I will say is I went into it thinking it was going to be a disaster, and I laughed a lot throughout it. It's okay. it's very witty, yeah. So I rewatched that. I rewatched a good portion of Mary Poppins, Mm. which we know has live action Mm -hmm. animation Mm -hmm. put into it. I watched uh, the portion of Anchors Away with our good friend Gene Kelly, where he does a whole dance number with Jerry from Tom and Jerry. Oh. Yeah, it's it's very famous. You would recognize it if you saw it. Yeah. I rewatched parts of the original Pete's Dragon from 1977. Yes, I did watch some of that as well. Good chunk of Space Jam. Classic. <laughs> I watched the entirety of Cool World from 1992. I've never heard of Cool World. There's cool a reason. World? There's a reason you haven't. Oh, okay. It's it's really bad. And I love bad movies. 
that it says Holly Wood if she could. Holly Wood, that's the name of the main character. And she will. And she will. Is this like a, now, a bad version of Roger Rabbit? That is not a movie for kids. I will just say that. Mm. Okay. <laughs> like there's there's no there's no moment in in uh, Cool World where you're like, I wonder if this is for kids. No, mm-hmm. it's not. Mm-hmm. I watched Paula Abdul's Opposites Attract music video with her and the cat, and I gotta say, I think Roger Rabbit is the best best to ever do it so far. Yeah, I'm, I mean, it looks so so good. Yeah, just the way they layered it and then added dimension and shadowing and the filtering they used it, the process i was telling seth this off mic but like i have watched so many behind the scenes and i've read and i still cannot comprehend it because and i was telling aunt this last night too i'm like i still am just so amazed by it yeah like i can't even understand how it's done and the fact that each character was hand drawn that's insane to me yeah it's it's very impressive um they earned three Oscars for this movie, and they mm-hmm. gave a special recognition to Richard Williams, and you know he dedicated it to the team. And you were saying that there's some behind the scenes yeah. tension. I mean, from what I watched, he everything was drawn in UK, and so Disney was a part of this project, but Disney was hands off. Yeah, and so Richard Williams was a very like meticulous type A person where. I think there's something to be said because that's why this movie looks so good. But apparently he wasn't like the greatest to work with mm. because he would just like rip up your drawings and yeah. you'd have to. Yeah. Well, because I it, mean, it's a good thing he did. <laughs> like if one thing was off, then uh, you'd have to start over. Right. But then from what I was gathering is that there was a team in California that took over some of the drawings. And I think they're the ones who did the Toontown part. Interesting. And he wasn't happy about that because it doesn't look the same. And I could be wrong, but this is from this particular video I watched. Yeah. It wasn't like an official. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very different. It's just not as good. And I feel like I don't need to see Toontown to yeah, I know. know what it is and yeah. be afraid for it and be happy for it. It does still look pretty good. Yeah. You know, for being... 30 plus years old at this point yeah and like i liked we got to see tweety bird there and droopy you know controlling the elevator yeah so funny absolutely and that's where we get the biggest uh matchup of all time in bugs bunny and mickey mouse wow 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 that was pretty great so apparently the deal was wb would let them use their characters but they had to have equal screen time Yes. Right. Yes. Which is like, okay, I get it. I get it. You know, you don't want to yeah, be I think that's completely fair. plowed over by the plot. But it led to two of the coolest scenes in the movie, which is Bugs mm-hmm. and Mickey, and then mm-hmm. Donald and Daffy doing the dueling pianos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Personally, I like the dueling piano scene better. Oh, I do too. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> There's something a little odd about Mickey Mouse laughing about him not having a parachute with bugs. It made sense, but it feels a little I out agree. of Mickey's. <laughs> I felt that was so weird. Like Mickey wouldn't be joking like that. Like Mickey's not funny. It's just different. Like bugs, this is what they do. Mickey yeah. doesn't do stuff like this. Yeah. Bugs is like, hey, you're falling to your death. Here's a spare tire. Ha ha. <laughs> <Right>. Goodbye. <laughs> right. But like Mickey would be like, upset or stressed or i don't know something a different emotion would be yeah shown Mm -hmm. i'm glad you brought up droopy Mm -hmm. droopy was another guy that i really liked as a kid (laughs) i don't know why i really liked droopy i really liked ziggy the comic strip oh i love ziggy Ziggy, where like everything just went wrong yes in his life all the time and i also liked charlie brown you know he was super depressed and right yeah yeah but Droopy is my favorite character who shows Your, up in the this cameo. Movie. Yeah, that's yeah, I love him. I th- I think my favorite. Well, I love that we see some characters from Fantasia. Mm-hmm. I thought that was pretty funny to work that in. But I also love seeing Betty Boot. Oh yeah, yeah. In in the club, and and we see like her and Eddie have a history. Right. 
she's the only one that he's like nice to. Yes. And I think it's because it has perhaps been that long since he was nice with the people in Toontown. Right. Or the tunes in Toontown. Right. Yeah. What did you think about when we find out why he is so bitter? Because his brother, who was his partner, they used to always work, not always, but they were very open to working with tunes. Yeah. They had a good relationship with the tunes. And then his brother is killed by a tune. Yeah. On that note, I just, I think that the movie does exposition so well. Yeah. And we're doing exposition like so far into the movie because it's happening very naturally. I was really surprised. Like I started, I was like writing in my notes. I was like, we're still establishing, establishing, establishing. Yeah. Even when Roger drinks alcohol for the first time, it's like, we're doing that now because it's going to be used later and it has to be established. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. in that way, this movie is very similar to Back to the Future, which we just did. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, we didn't Mm -hmm. just do, but we did on this show recently. And it's like Zemeckis and Spielberg in that way, they're very good at what they do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't always appreciate what they do, but... (laughs) We'll give it where it's... Yeah, it's no surprise that Disney gave Zemeckis final cut of this movie, let him almost double the budget some people say over doubled the budget. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really no surprise because of mm-hmm. how well executed Back to the Future was. And I feel like right. Roger Rabbit is almost exactly the same, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense when we see that Eddie and Teddy, which is like, <laughs> those are cartoon names, you know, like Eddie and Teddy, the detective brothers, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they grew up in the circus and like they were Mm -hmm. circus performers with their dad and then you're shown this stuff in reverse right so we don't see their life from beginning to end we see it from where he is now going all the way back so you have to kind of like keep some things in mind but when they graduate from police school they're wearing clown noses and they're willing to go work in toontown because they thought it was funny And you see the newspaper clippings of them (laughs) cracking the case of the missing nephews. Yes. Of Huey, Dewey, and Louie. And then clearing Goofy of being a spy. (laughs) Which which I thought was really, really funny. And so for a tune to kill your brother, okay, that's upsetting. But for a tune to kill, you know, Teddy, who like their whole life up to that point seems to be comedy and entertainment and they're trying to help the tunes in Toontown and that makes it make a lot more sense. So I, I think it can feel a little heavy handed, but then as the movie goes on and if you're paying attention, I think it actually, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I want to quickly go back to the Jessica rabbit scene yeah, it might be the scene that makes me laugh the most in this movie. And like both times I watched it, I was just like crying at the end of her performance when she goes in and it's like she's going to kiss Bob Hoskins. Just his face. <laughs> <laughs> the look on his face. It's it's the funniest because it's not just like shock and it's not just like Arr. it's like you can read his mind and he's like. I'm in love with a tune. (laughs) And it's like the scene, like a man's whole reality, like break away. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's, oh my God, it's incredible. It's, it's so funny. So, so funny. And Hoskins sells that part so well. And I also wanted to just mention a producer on this movie, Kathleen Kennedy. You know, yeah. she's got a bad yeah. rap in recent years, but she's a producer, executive producer on some of the most beloved films of all time. And, you know, that wasn't on accident. So this movie was made for original budget was 30 million. And I've seen as high as 70 million. Oh, my God. Yes. So at the time, wow. 30 million was the most ever spent on an animated movie. Mm-hmm. And by the time they were done, it's like 
yeah, it's just a, like an absurd, absurd amount of money. I believe it, though. I believe it. I do I believe it. it. I do believe it. Yeah. And I wish I could like go back in time and just be like, let them do, just let them do it. Like this, yeah, this will be one of the most important things. I mean, for Disney in the eighties, it ain't well pretty. It ain't it's pretty. Not the man. Renaissance yet. No. So like, Little Mermaid came out after. Yeah. And so then it started. Right. Then we got the goods are coming, but at this point, nothing's. It's not great. Right. And it does it does kind of end in a good way their experimentation with yeah. more adult fare. But yeah. even this, mm-hmm. they were like, yeah, we're not releasing this as Disney. Like we're putting, right. this, <laughs> we're putting this out under one of our other production companies because <laughs> we don't want it's this to too be risque. a Disney the movie. Just- yeah. No. So it goes on to make uh, 351 million worldwide. Huge hit. Crazy huge hit. The only movie that made more that year was Rain Man. Yep. Which mm-hmm. goes on to win the Oscar for Best Picture. And yeah. It currently has a 96 on Rotten Tomatoes, 3.9 on Letterboxd, 83 on Metacritic. This was included in the National Film Registry in 2016. Okay. Uh, Ebert gave this four stars. And his review is really funny and interesting. Is it? Yeah, yeah. I would recommend, if you're a fan of this movie, go check out Ebert's original 1988 review for the movie. I couldn't get like a firm total start to total end time. Oh, wow. I mean, this took years to get made because they kept changing who was going to do it. Like the screenplay got lots of rewrites. Yeah. Yeah. So years, as all I was going to say. Years. (laughs) Years. Most of the movies that we do, it's like, you know, 40 to 90 days. This was years. No. No. Years. So we asked some friends on Twitter what they thought. Jonathan E. at Jeb91380. Jeb19380. I'm going to guess that Jeb stands for Jonathan E. and then his last name. And then his birthday is September 13th, 1980. That's a really good guess. Take out me doing the robot voice. (laughs) Why? That was funny. Okay, you can keep it in. (laughs) Says, this is one of the most important movies from my childhood. I saw it in the theater as a kid. It was one of the greatest things I'd ever seen, and it still is today in my adult years. This movie is in my top 10 all-time favorites. Mm -hmm. Wowie zowie. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine seeing this in the theater. Oh, my God. At my head would explode. As a kid, you would you would like, leave feeling like anything is possible. Yeah. And I remember watching it and my dad being like, well, this is like the greatest thing. Yeah. Like my dad loved this movie, too. Mm-hmm. Matt Campagna at Matt Campagna. Says a bold socialist essay on the importance of public transit and the dangers of self-driving cars, even if that self-driving car makes a top-tier ride at Disneyland. Yes, this was <laughs> this was supposed to be a whole thing. This was They were supposed to like make a whole theme park uh, inside of MGM, which is now Hollywood Studios in Disney. Really? And, yeah, but that didn't happen. And then I believe there was a car ride. I'm like, have I been on it? I probably, depending on the time that it was up. But I mean, just to mention Penny, the car, the cab for a hot sec. Penny at one point drives a car. I know. I I didn't pick like, up Penny on that. Gets in the gets in the car. He's like, you no, let me do it. I was yeah. like, what hands? Right. What is a tune? The doors. <laughs> what is? <laughs> what is a tune? Yeah, I didn't pick up on that my first time around, and then. <laughs> And I'm like, this car is driving a car. A car. Uh huh. Oh, yes. my God. A car is driving a car. On the Meats of Dublin at. What? On the Meats of Dublin. Is this from something? At Meatsical. Meats? Like, like meat that you eat? Yeah. Okay. Iconic. Arguably one of Hollywood's most synergetic successes. I loved seeing all the different tunes interacting and. Nowadays, because everything, I hate the word meta. I don't know why it just bothers me. 
and be like, oh, that's so meta. I'm like, yeah, okay, I don't care anymore. I, is like, it the way that people use it? No, I or just you hate the I, idea of it. I hate the idea, I think, of it. Like everything crossing over and being around and Baby Yoda hanging out with Luke Skywalker. And sometimes things are best on their own. And so it was really cool to see here all the studios allowing their characters, I mean, getting paid for it, of course, but <laughs> the characters interacting and it's just a one-off thing. Like there's I no agree. I agree. Roger yep. Rabbit universe, you know, like if this movie was made now, everyone would be talking yeah. about the Roger Rabbit universe. It'd be like more, yeah. more, more. And here it's just like, no, they're not the main characters, you know, mm-hmm. Bugs is around, but he's not the main character. It's just Debbie. With an exclamation point. Debbie! And that's their at. It's D-E-B-E-E 1015. Debbie! Debbie! Deb- it- it's just Debbie. You need to take the just out of your name. You're not just Debbie. You're the Debbie. Exactly. It's the Debbie. I mean, if you feel Debbie. that way. The Debbie. <laughs> Poor Debbie. She's like, I'm, there. I'm never writing in again. Yeah. Debbie says, in today's day and age, do you think Disney and Warner would allow their intellectual property to appear on screen together? Do you think it would have the same impact as it had then? I don't know what the licensing deals, because not to bring up theme parks again, yeah. but Marvel is now a part of Disney. Yeah. Simpsons is under that. Yeah. Under Disney, but then Simpsons still is very much part of Universal Studios. And so it's definitely like a licensing deal. So I, I don't I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure because I feel like now all these big companies have sucked up the smaller ones. That's right. That That's now right. they can do their own thing within the world of their characters. Yeah. So it can be like yeah. Scooby-Doo and Batman. Sure. Yeah, why not? Why not? And Just the- like don't make them like clean. I keep, I'm using the wrong phrasing here. Yeah. But like, I don't want these guys to look CGI'd. Right. I want them to look like how they look. But that's a, you know, because I'm stuck in the 90s. Yeah. Well, 80s, uh, whatever. I think everyone agrees with you because when they made the new Space Jam movie, I did not see the new one. Oh, man. It's bad. Really? Bad. I mean, well, I don't know why I'm surprised because why why'd we need a new one? We didn't, probably. It's bad news. There's. And it's exactly this thing that we're talking about. Like at the final game, there are like all these characters from WB properties, Mm -hmm. but like, like the Ice King is there from Game of Thrones. Weird. It's look it up. That I will look that nutty. Just look up like who's in the crowd in Space Jam. (laughs) Wow. Debbie also says, "Do you think it would have the same impact?" I don't. I think we're oversaturated with stuff That's like this right. now. Overstimulated too. Like it would just not even. Yeah. It might be like a quick thought or a quick combo, but it wouldn't not like this. Right. Sean Shank. Hey, buddy. Good friend and patron at Tyler underscore Burnham. Which always throws me off. <laughs> I'm just going to put it out there. Oh, maybe you, maybe Sean will explain his Twitter handle. He to has. You. Oh, okay. He has. But it just still throws me off. Oh, okay. He says, it's amazing how well this holds up. I rewatched it on 4K disc, and the animation mixed with live action still looks relatively seamless. The Donald and Daffy Duck dueling piano scene is the part that has always stuck with me since childhood. I love the weasels, too. Oh, yeah. Yes, the weasels are funny. Did you get um, Biff's gain vibes from the weasels? Oh, yeah. Definitely. (laughs) Because each one has their own little thing. Yeah, and also just like them swinging around real guns. <laughs> <laughs> I love the straight jacket weasel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this one's crazy. Yeah. And finally, we have Rissa Berry Beret at Turtle Farts 24. Oh, that name. Yeah. It brings me joy. It's great, right? It's great. You get First, you get hit with the Rissa Berry Beret. Right. And then you get the second one of the Turtle, the Turtle Farts, Farts 24. They say, first off, I loved Roger. Seriously, one of my fave cartoon characters slash voices. 
Shout out to Charles Fleischer. Second, I always wanted to drink that scotch. (laughs) And third, I'll always remember the hilarious patty cake bit. Yeah. Which that is funny. It is funny. Fourth, obviously, the iconic Jessica Rabbit and her great lines. It was interesting to watch Charles be on set and he was just dressed in like a bunny suit and he would just be present. I loved it. I was like, wow. One character I just want to mention, because I would feel bad if we didn't, was Dolores, who is yeah. Eddie's girlfriend, not girlfriend. Yeah. She helped him a lot. She helped Roger out a lot. So I think we sh- she deserves a little shout out. She was great. Absolutely. She is great. She's funny, very yeah. strong. Yeah. And it's a great name for Bob Hoskins to growl. <laughs> Dolores. All right. <laughs> Good point. So there's some people that we do know. Now we go to a segment of the show where we hear from people that we don't know. It's called Half Star, Three Star, Five Star. star, All right, so these are reviews from Letterboxd.com, which is a website and an app where you can log, rate, and review different movies that you've seen. You can follow Michelle and I on there. I'm at Seth Vargas, and she's at Mitch Ruby which is M-I-C-H-R-U-B-Y. That's right. We start with a half-star review, which is the lowest rating that you can give a film. We go all the way up to a five-star review, which is the highest rating that you can give a film. And for the half-star review, do you have any requests? Man, oh man, like what do we do here? I know. Are you going to do Roger? Are you going to do Eddie? Like what are you feeling? (laughs) Wait, wait, hold on. (laughs) Ah, that's like a horse. That's hard to do. I've been trying to do Roger's (laughs) thing. It's... It is hard. Yeah. Dealer's choice. There's Judge Doom. I'm looking for a murderer. (laughs) (laughs) Can you do Mickey? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll try to do Mickey. Okay. (laughs) The whole time I watched this, I wondered, who is this for? It's too silly for adults and just slightly too mature for kids. (laughs) Teens, I guess. It sucks. I laughed less than five times. Maybe it was good in the 90s, but not in 2022. Who counts how many times they left? <laughs> that, that was good, Seth. That was very good. Very, very good. Thanks. We need to put a compilation together of all your Ugh, that, impressions. I think I would rather jump in a lake. Okay. Well, it's not for you. Okay. So. Okay, three-star review says, the way the human and animated characters are blended together is probably the best thing about this. But nothing else stood out to me. Still entertaining throughout, though. Well said. I think that there is a movie here beyond just the effects. I mean, there's definitely an intricate story. Yeah. Five-star says, I'm flabbergasted that this may in fact be better than both Contact and Back to the Future within Zemeckis' filmography. This is one of the most technically astounding movies I've ever seen in my life. And the interplay between the real actors and tunes was flawless. This has all of the strengths of a Looney Tunes short mixed into a shockingly raunchy noir thriller. And it's consistently hilarious. This is undoubtedly a classic. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I- so Michelle has a rating system, which is a schmovie, a movie, a film. We also rate the film one through five stars, and we talk about our recommendations. Michelle, do you want to go first, or do you want me to go first? I want you to go first, and I'm going to tell you what I thought you rated this movie. Okay. All right. Okay. I I wrote down in the beginning of this episode that you were going to rate this 3.8. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I think that this is a film, and I think I'm about to blow your mind. You ready? I think this is a five-star movie. What? Wow, 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 (laughs) wow. Or I should have said a five-star film, but I think it's a five-star film. Like I said, the more you learn about it and how much they like didn't have to do. That's why I went on the journey of watching all those other movies because I watched Who Framed Roger Rabbit first. And I was like, I want to see how everyone else did it going back to the 30s and then going to 2022. And you watch all of those and you're like, 
no, this is still the best. I think it's the best yeah. that has they've ever done it. I think it's yeah. a miracle that all the studios work together, that they gave them double the budget to finish something. They gave him final cut. They trusted him to put in all this stuff that <laughs> makes it unmarketable. Who do you market this movie to? <laughs> right. You know? Right. Um, I heard... Is this uh, rated? Is this rated PG? I think it's rated PG. Yeah. I also think that, right? Yeah. That's... I heard, I don't know that this is, you know, provable, but I heard that movie theaters had to mop the floors because kids kept peeing themselves during the Judge Doom parts. Even if that's not true, that's something that I still like because it's wow. scary. And I recommend it if you haven't seen it or if you haven't seen it in a long time and you are someone who would consider themselves to be into film, go back and watch Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Look at the craft that goes into it. And yeah. I agree. I can't believe you rated this five stars. Wow. So I wrote down. Yeah. I didn't write down movie, movie, or film. I wrote down that you rated this five stars. Okay, you are correct. Woohoo! Yes, I am rating this five stars, but I'm actually rating this a movie. Okay. I think this is a movie, or if I could ever remember the term, the, the beautiful love child of a film in a movie. Right. But this leaned for me towards movie. And pretty much everything you said so beautifully, like, I am recommending this. If you haven't seen it in a while, you should watch it. It is so well done. And if you want, go watch Behind the Ears making uh, that's what it's called behind the ears making right. of who frame roger rabbit on youtube and then after that it's going to recommend you this like whole in-depth one hour history that someone did mm. of from start to finish of making it and it is so impressive i mean if you don't like this movie well i guess i'm not talking to you so <laughs> i don't know how you couldn't i know there's a couple of those half star people but you can't be impressed like the execution behind it is right, yeah. insane. It's insane. Uh, and I, like, I'll say five stars isn't my enjoyment level. Right. You know I thought, I mean? listen, we didn't even do, talk about it. I mean, I thought when we finally get to uh, Eddie and Roger and Jessica and Doom all in the warehouse, I thought that went on for a little bit too long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That being said, to me, it's still five stars. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, good job. Good job. You know, this we were going to watch this either way because, you know, I was going to keep pushing it right. or something. <laughs> That's true. I think this might be like the third time around <laughs> that, who, that this is, movie yes. has come up. Yeah. Yes. So I'm glad I finally uh, I finally made it in. And I, it's a good mystery. It fits in. That's right. That's right. So our next film was voted by our patrons. Patreon.com slash Movie Friends Podcast. $5 a month gets you access to all of our additional shows, which we are up to six bonus shows, I believe. And you get to vote. You get to vote on monthly themes. You get to vote on one episode per month. It's changing the trajectory of this show. You got to get on it. Come on, man. Yeah, use your voice. Come join us. So our next movie, I don't want to say a lot. You can. I'll forget it, as we know. I will say this movie, when it was one of the recommended movies, I was like, this will be the most interesting one to do with Michelle. And not because of you, but because of the movie. I have only seen this movie once. Okay. And it is crazy. We're continuing our run of clearing up directors that we haven't covered yet, by the way. We did Hitchcock kurosawa and next week we're doing david lynch oh we're going to be talking about mulholland drive okay from 2001 have uh -huh. you seen this i have not i have heard about it okay it's definitely been in the peripheral naomi watts ever hear of her <laughs> yes sounds familiar uh i'm excited uh this is a long one 147 minutes okay but this is the last mystery movie of the month. This is the we, this last is it. This mystery is it. movie of the month. Yeah. Highly rated movie. Much beloved movie. Okay. All right. And the patrons chose this. Yes. We'll see how you do, patrons. <laughs> I'm just letting you know, like, in a couple months, I'd be like, revoke the privileges. 
<laughs> they chose set it off, and set it off was so good. Set it off was so good. Yes, it was so good. So, yeah. all right, okay. All right, here that's we go. that's exactly how I feel. So, yeah. I'm gonna try so hard to not talk to you about this movie before and after. Well, same. I, that's my biggest challenge yeah. since, like, I changed the way I view the movies for the show now. Like, in the beginning, I was just like, blah, 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 blah. And I was, like, texting you and sending you screenshots. Or it's not screenshots. Pictures I took on my phone. Whatever. What do you call it? It's not a screenshot. It's a – whatever. Uh, it, yeah, so it's hard. It is really hard to not talk to you beforehand. Like, it's it actually sucks. Yeah. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. <sighs> I'm going to try. I'm going to try. We're going to pick up next week. On Mulholland Drive. I, <laughs> yeah. One of the options was Clue. I just want to say that. So. Ah! <laughs> Come on, friend. Is it because we did Who Framed Roger Rabbit and that this is like a fun one? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Or but. you were like, you actually like, you know, because you have a hand in it. You're like, we're not doing Clue. Oh, no, no, no. Nope. I I am. I know. Hands I off. You. Hands off. You're not messing with the ballots and the no. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, send us an email, moviefriendspodcast at gmail.com. Let us know what you think about Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Mulholland Drive, any of that stuff. Like I said, you can join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash moviefriendspodcast. Also, check us out at moviefriendspodcast.com. Hey, we started putting up articles written by our movie friends. This is so cool. It's so cool. It's really yeah, cool. There's really good stuff up there. It's like really unique perspectives. Yeah, I love um, it. I love it. It's yeah, like yeah, it's cool. Very cool thing. Give us a rating and a review wherever you are listening. It really helps the show. Be sure to include a snail in there for Michelle. Please just drop a hidden snail. All right. Five stars. Double five stars. It's been a long time since that's happened. I know. And the fact that like one of my movies, you, you, you uh, rated five stars. Yeah. I, Hey, I feel good about that. You should. I I thought I didn't know what I didn't know what to think. I really didn't know what to think going back into it. And yeah, I'm thoroughly impressed. Anyway, thanks, Michelle. Thank you, Seth. And hey, thank you very much for listening till next week when we're talking about Mulholland Drive. Have a good one. Movie Friends is produced by Seth Vargas and Michelle Rubenstein. Music by Anthony Vicora. If you like the show, Please subscribe and give us a rating. It really helps us find new friends. Thanks.